Ooh. Our next show for us is Ring of Honor Battle Star Show. We've been building to for two whole shows, which, to be fair, at the start of this series has been rather well impressive. This is episode eight of my Ring of Honor TV show. My name is Ben Chapman. If you're new around here, make sure to subscribe and do like this video if you do enjoy it. Every single like is appreciated. So today, as mentioned, we have Battlestar. Last episode was the 500th episode, main evented by the massive Fatal 4-Way for the IWGP United States Championship. And tonight also has a similarly massive main event with the Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Championship on the line in a triple threat as Roosh defends against Samoa Joe and EC3 in a triple threat. But where are we having this show? Well, we are in the Mid-South. We're going to Colorado Broomsfield to the First Bank Center. We're expecting about two, just over 2,000 people. This day, this arena fits, up, fits over 3,000, so we'll comfortably get all our fans in. And I am looking forward to seeing what we can do with Battlestar 2021. So 2,089 people, my bad, filled the First Bank Center, which is slightly more than we were anticipating, which is an absolute positive. And they're coming in to see our first match tonight, which is the Varsity Blondes of AEW, Brian Pillman Jr. teaming with AEW's Griff Garrison to take on the foundation of Jonathan Gresham and Jay Lethal. And Pillman Jr. picks up the win when he pins Jay Lethal with a Tornado DDT. Garrison was was the weak link. He was struggling to keep up with everyone's performances. With 35 compared to Pillman's 46, Lethal's 64, and Gresham's 70. Gresham is one of the best in-ring performers in this save, and that is almost undisputed. 57 rating though, not too bad. And it does sort of set up Brian Pillman Jr. to go on to challenge Jonathan Gresham for the television title. It's now our only mid-card title, as since both the television and the pure title were both in the foundation, we sort of, I sort of merged them into one to make it easier, because I didn't need, don't think we needed two mid-card titles. And I think I'm right by that. With the roster we have now, especially with all the cuts, we don't need two mid-card titles. Next segment. Fatal 4-Way Tag Team Match for the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships as Mexa Squad who are the temporary champions because of an injury to Flamita so Rayolas has taken over his role in Freebird Rules they go on Los Lucha Brothers of Bente El Miedo and Rey Phoenix versus La Faction in Globaneles which is La Sombra and the debuting Babano Cavaniello and the Briscoes Yeah, we've got three Mexican teams and a set of confederates. Yay! And it is La Faction Ingenobles who pick up the win when Babalo Cavanero pins Rayolas with La Cavanera. It's a mitz Rayolas with La Cavanalia. Unfortunately, however, I'm looking down here. Oh dear. La Sombra and Babalo Cavanero. Cavanalio have absolutely no chemistry as partners which is not what we were looking for they are our current tag team champions but they have no chemistry so they probably won't be holding those belts for very long we'll find a way to get those belts onto someone else soon six women tag next as Maki Ito Daniel Dashwood and Thunder Rosa defeat Session Moth Martina, Jordan Grace and Alison Kay in 20 minutes and 42 se 7 seconds. So, decent length match. We get four debuts in this match. Jordan Grace, Alison Kay, Maki Ito and Thunder Rosa all making their debuts. Two for each team. And it's Thunder Rosa who picks up the victory. With a reverse DDT on Alison Kay, if we're looking at the in-ring ratings, Rosa was quite a way ahead of the nearest near, her nearest other performers and a 49 overall is pretty strong for 
the upper mid card of our women's division with people who we do want to put into the main event scene. We then go to an eight man tag. As Samuel Del Sol teams with Levy Cooper, Laredo Kid, and PJ Black to take on Leo Rush, Dalton Castle, and the OG Kingdom of, of course, Matt Taven and Mike Bennett. And it's Levy Cooper who picks up the win, pinning Matt Taven with Project Mayhem. We're looking at the in ring performances, the actual best performance of this night was Samurai Del Sol, which is very exciting, fun to see because, you know, we have sort of managed to create a very strong Lucha Libre almost division. I don't know if that's the right word, but section of our roster. The amount of Lucha Libre talent we have been able to cultivate to join Ring of Honor has been amazing. Even new people like Lucha Brothers, Laredo Kid, uh, Babano Cavaniero, even to, back to the people we already had like Bandido, Flamita, Leolas, Roosh, the bestia del ring before we fired him, a Dr Ryu Lee's here somewhere, Dragon Lee. But you know, not a bad set of match here. Levy Cooper picking up the win. He is someone I think has main event potential in this company. He's not going to get here with soon, but I think a slow build for Levy Cooper and he will be a main eventer in this company. Ring of Honor women's title is on the line as Cassie Lee defeats Mickey James in 24 minutes and 41 seconds with a bitch kick. Mickey James's own move is used against her. It's very much a clear statement of putting Cassie Lee over. Cassie Lee is the woman in Ring of Honor. She is the top star. She's going to be the top star for a while. I'm saying that now. Cassie Lee is here at the top to stay. But we are going to set up her next program quite quickly. Well, or not. We'll set up that program in the next episode on Ring of Honor TV. Which, by the way, our next pay-per-view is War of the Worlds. So it will be quite heavily based on the alliances that we have with New Japan, Ring of Honor, well we are Ring of Honor, New Japan, New Japan of America, AEW and I believe Impact. The War of the Worlds is going to be a fun show. But we'll get a quick promo before the main event with some Samoa Joe. He's cutting a promo, he's pretty much going into EC3 and Roosh explaining why he, Samoa Joe, is going to be the next Ring of Honor champion and what and to join the illustrious list of only a few people who ever won the Ring of Honor World Championship twice. 68 rating, great stuff. And in the end, Roosh retains. Roosh defeats Samoa Joe and EC3 in 26 minutes and 4 seconds when Roosh pins EC3 with a Lalanza. And that's defense number 6 of his Ring of Honor World Championship. 63 rating and Samoa Joe has once again failed to win the Ring of Honor World Championship. We get a 62, which is actually our overall best rating for any card that we have put on, I believe. I will double check this afterwards, but 62 increased our pop in 51 regions, which is very promising. And it was a very consistent show across the board. Best match being the main event and the tag teams was also right up there, despite the team that ended up winning not being able to wrestle together, it seems. Ah shit. Let's see what the let's see what the TV rating said though. Well, the first positive which I'm absolutely noticing is that the fact that the news article about our show is that our show has been rated as awesome, which is chef's kiss, exactly what we were looking for. The other shows which did happen, there was a New Japan show wrestling Satsumi New Kino. All Japan had a show as well. You know, that's not a bad night for wrestling. But the most important thing is the ratings. Rick Harrison, of course, left due to him only being on a one night deal. 38,000 viewers, which 
none of them being pay-per-view buys, which we understand, because why would people buy the pay-per-view when it's on a streaming site? What happened? What? I'm going to, I'll analyze, you know, I'm, I'm going to analyze that in a late off camera and maybe cheat to edit it, but shh, you heard nothing. Let's have a look. We just want the event. It is our highest viewed event on the Honor Club. We have more people watching it. Not only is it, is it was I correct? It is our highest rated show in terms of actual show rating I believe it's also our highest rated show in terms of attendance and our highest watched event that is promising for the future of Ring of Honor with the roster we have there is so much potential for the future and I'm looking forward to fulfilling it and I hope you guys will stick along for the ride I'll see you then bye